personal finance PowerPoint presentation, housing rental process overview. Get ready to get financially fit by practicing personal finance. In prior presentations, we've been thinking about the thought process for larger purchase types of decisions. And then we compared and contrasted pros and cons between renting a home and purchasing a home. We're gonna focus now more on the rental side of the decision focusing in future presentation on the purchasing side of the decision, noting that as we think about these financial decisions, we can break them out into more short-term decisions and longer-term decisions. The very short-term decisions, the, th the ones we make on a day-by-day -day process, are those kind of decisions that we could use a tinkering process, a trial and error process. We can hone down our habits so we can train our gut, so we can trust our gut, on the day-to-day -day decisions. The longer term decisions, usually having the higher dollar amount decisions that are gonna have an impact for multiple periods into the future. And then you've got a lot of areas that you might look on the scale that are kind of in the middle. So if you're talking about a home purchase, that's clearly gonna be a longer term decision. If you're talking about the renting of a place, then that usually is gonna be on the middle end kind of scale in your decision making process. So you might wanna factor that in in terms of how much thought you want to put into the rental making decision. So you might have a rent that's going to be month by month, which would be fairly short term decision, but it's clearly not a decision that you're going to be doing on a day to day process that you could just kind of trust your gut on a day to day kind of thing. Uh, or you're more likely going to have a lease that you might be locked into, say, for a year, which is kind of a middle in term type decision. That's a significant amount of time. And given the fact that it is costly to move, it, you got to kind of factor that in as a fairly significant type of decision. So you're probably going to want to put more time into the renting decision in terms of where, where you want to be and, and what's going to be your long-term process for where you're going to be. So you can think about this. We've been breaking out just the buying decision into our four categories when you're making a purchase type of decision on a longer-term basis. we got the sh pre-shopping activities. You can kind of apply those out to the rentable activities as well. Well, number two, evaluating the alternatives would be applicable to renting. Number three, determining the purchase price. And then number four, the post-purchase activities. So you kind of apply that process still out to the rental kind of process as well. So if we think about the search, when you're searching for the rental place where you're going to be, select an area of uh, rental amount. So you want to kind of consider where the area you're going to be. And you can typically kind of think about the size of the place and the, the uh, location of the place to get a decent idea of around where the amount is going to be for the rental, uh, the, the price of the rental. Compare costs and facilities of comparable units. So clearly we want, we want to go through a comparison process. A lot of times we can do this more easily online than we have been able to do in the past. And we have a lot of different tools we'll talk a little bit more about in future presentations to do that side by side comparison. But once we've narrowed it down, we probably still want to go and take a physical look at the locations. So uh, talk to current and post and past residents. So if we know anybody that has lived in that particular location, has worked with the area, the management company, and so on, that could be useful information. And if we don't know anybody, we could actually go and talk to people that are in the location and get some more information thusly. That would be useful generally as well. Before signing a lease, remember when you're signing a lease, it's not like you're, you're purchasing a home for 30 years and signing the 30 year mortgage. It's not that long, but it's still a significant amount of time that you're committing to. It's still a contract and agreement and something that you get, you're going to be locked into and you want to you know, verify that you know what's going on before you're locked in. So verify lease starting date costs and facilities. So clearly you want to know what's the starting date. When can I move into this uh, place and so on? You want to make sure that you have double checked the costs on it. So you've, you've locked down the costs that are there. Actually look at the lease then and make sure that the cost that's on the lease before you sign it is what you agreed on and thought it was going to be and facilities what kind of facilities are basically available. Make sure that uh, you, you know you have the idea of what is there, what you want in terms of the facilities, like a pool and, and that kind of stuff, and uh, what kind of capacity you have to them. And that could include things like garages or like the overhangs that you can park your car under and so on and so forth. Uh, one, one time I moved into a place and I, I didn't know there was a difference between parking under this overhang thing and under the normal parking. 
and my car was towed after that so make sure you <laughs> make sure you know the rules on the parking and whatnot so talk to a lawyer about unclear aspects of the lease so if you are looking at a lease they're getting of course most leases are getting more and more standardized but uh clearly you know you can have differences to the leases you can have a whole a whole range of differences and if you're moving from place to place especially in different states then you might not be as familiar with you know the structure of the lease and it would be always great if you can have a lawyer uh, take a look at the lease or if you have a particular item that you're unclear about then you might see if you can have someone help you out with that particular item note in writing signed by the owner the condition of the rental unit so you would like to actually go through the rental unit because typically you're going to be putting down the down payment which you're hoping to get back at the end and you want to go through the unit and make sure that any kind of things that you might say was damaged going into it is not something that you're going to be paying for out of uh, the down payment remember if two names are on the lease one person can be held responsible for the full rent so then you've got all this kind of issues with well what if two people are renting that's going to be a lot more complex in terms of just the lease terms because now now you're going into the lease and if two people are signing it's kind of like a partnership you're kind of both liable uh, for it and whenever you go into something where it's like a partner type of agreement or arrangement it's often the case that if one person is negligent in the partnership the other one can be held responsible for the entire thing so if you've got if you both sign the lease it's often the case it might quite likely could be the case given the format of the lease that if one person doesn't pay the rent that the recourse is still on you uh, to pay the rent even though you paid your half of the rent and so on and so forth so when you get into those kind of agreements where you got multiple people you want to make sure what your responsibilities are and that you're moving whoever you're moving in with uh, is knows what their responsibilities are anytime you have any kind of partnership agreement it's best to really kind of lay down you know what what the expectations are going in clearly you can also have situations where you need a co-signer kind of situation and you've got similar kind of kind of uh, responsibility issues that you would want to make sure that everybody involved is well aware of living in rental property keep all the facilities in good condition so just as a general rule when you're living in the rental property you you, you want to basically keep the facilities in good condition so you're not you know causing a problem uh, for yourself and others and of course if there's damage to the facilities that could be a problem for your deposit and so on contact the owners regarding needed repairs so if you have the repairs one of the benefits on the rental property is that possibly you can have the repairs taken care of by the owner as opposed to uh, um, outside maintenance which could be a benefit respect the rights of others regarding the noise so clearly if you're a rental property you're probably in a bit closer together kind of situation and therefore you're going to have more kind of noise conditions and aspects that you might have if you were on a single uh, family unit and you, you want to adhere to these rules for the most part as well too not just because it's a courteous thing to do but that as well but also because it it can have a, an effect if you go somewhere else i mean it would, it, it's not likely that if you go somewhere else and rent something else it's possible that they would like to, you know uh, to contact your prior rental or something like that it's, you know they could ask but that's possible so especially if you're in a, in a college kind of town or something like that it would be nice to be when you're moving from place to place to just make sure that you're you know you're respectful of the place and then when you leave it would be great if you could leave on good terms just like any other kind of agreement if you're at a job it would be nice if you can leave the job with good terms so that when you could get more easily to leave, go to the next job and the same is true with the rental property if you're you know if you're not causing problems it's more likely that you you might be able to pick up the next rental property a bit more smoothly than if uh, you were a menace to the, to the place or anything like that. So obtain renter's insurance for personal belongings and liability situations. So lease end, clean the apartment. So clearly when the lease is ending, you're going to move out, then you, they're going to they're going to inspect the place for the security deposit. And again, usually you would like to just in terms of having the 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 process go as smoothly as possible for you to go from one lease place to the next lease place you would like to basically you know put the leave the place kind of as you have it and that will most likely help you to pick up the security deposit when you leave as well so leave in the same condition as you moved in uh, tell the landlord where to send your security deposit so make sure that the landlord still is able to give you the money that if they owe you a security deposit they know where to put that deposit 
require that anyone deductions from your security deposit be documented. So if the landlord removes money from the security deposit, they should tell you why they removed it from the security deposit. And if it's significant, then you want to make sure that, you know, you had an idea of of where the, the place started from and whether or not it's in the same condition that you left. And then you can go from there if you want to argue over whether or not there was a justifiable decrease in the security deposit.